Besides tracking active fund managers against their respective benchmarks, S&P Dow Jones Indices also compares how well institutional fund managers have fared in producing winning records against their respective indexes over time. The U.S. Institutional Scorecard, as it's called, serves as an extension of the SPIVA research series that's become so widely accepted in the industry. SPIVA, of course, stands for the Standard & Poor Indices versus Active Report. To explain the aims and methodology of the institutional version, we're fortunate to have with us today Craig Lazara, who is Managing Director of S&P Dow Jones Indices. Hi, Craig. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Murray. Always a pleasure to be here. I uh, wanted to start out by asking, isn't institutional class funds typically uh, have little, if any significant difference in constituent holdings than their retail class cousins, correct? But they do offer lower fund management fees, which raises an, uh, the interesting question, with lower fee structures, has active management proven to still be a winner, at least for institutional grade investors? Yeah. Uh, the answer generally is is no, uh, un, unsurprisingly. I, I remember, Murray, when the, the very first institutional SPIVA was issued, I had a meeting with an with a institutional customer that day, and they were saying, well, what is this all about? And I said, well, it's, it's, it's really very simple. The message of SPIVA Classic, the, the one that we've always issued for 20 years now that uses mutual fund data, the message of SPIVA Classic is that most active managers underperform most of the time. The message of institutional SPIVA is that most institutional managers underperform most of the time. Um, and there are two ways that we get at that in the institutional SPIVA report. One is simply to add back the fees uh, on our mutual fund database. And we know what mutual fund returns were. We know what the expense ratio is for, uh, uh, for all these funds. So just simply add the expense ratio back. And that gives you some measure of uh, the level of outperformance before, uh, before fees are taken. Now, not surprisingly, fewer managers outperform if you don't have to pay their fees, but it's still a substantial majority. The other thing we do is to access a, a different database instead of using a mutual fund database, uh, use a database of actual institutional accounts. Um, now that has some difficulties because there is a survivor bias problem. It's self-reported. It's not as comprehensive or as, as clean as a mutual fund database would be. Nonetheless, when you, when you look at that, what you find is that typically, uh, certainly over time, a majority of managers there underperform as well. And that database also, Craig, if I understand correctly, it's uh, more limited than a full openly disclosed uh, retail database from CRISP. Um, the, the the managers, since they're self-reporting, um, can, can uh, exclude certain performance or fund uh, data, and they also tend to not report as fully. That that is correct. Yeah, that is correct. I mean, the, the the gold standard for database quality is something like the CRISP survivor adjusted survivorship adjusted database because uh, legally it's legal requirement for mutual funds to report. So we have all the data. They're 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 there. Uh, if a fund goes out of business, we still know what its record was when it was in business. Uh, we don't have the same advantages with institutional data. Nonetheless, the the results are uh, are comparable. I mean, clearly. I think it's fair to say two things are two things are clear. Obviously, gross of fees managers look better than they do net of fees. That's not surprising. And generally speaking, uh, comparing on a on a gross of fee basis, the institutional portfolios are somewhat better than their mutual fund counterparts. In other words, relatively fewer underperform. Uh, but over time, uh, it's still the case that a majority uh, underperform, whether it's be, whether active management is being packaged as an institutional account or a mutual fund. Okay. And what do you attribute that to? Because we hear in the general press uh, a lot about, oh, the big advantage for indexing is, you know, the fees, the lower cost, which is true. But this study kind of makes a point that there's more to this picture than might uh, generally be reported. No, Murray, I think that's right. I mean, low fees are one of the advantages that, that index funds have, but they're not the only advantage. I mean, I, to, to cite a couple others, uh, I mean, we, I'm, you and I have said this to each other before, there's no source of underperformance 
for about performance for successful active managers other than the underperformance of the unsuccessful active managers. So if a market is very largely professionalized, and when I say professionalized, I mean run by professional investment managers, be they mutual fund managers or managers of pension funds or endowments or whatever, when a market is very largely institutionalized, uh, it, it's not reasonable to expect that the average manager will outperform because the average manager basically is the market. Uh, and so that's one thing that that is independent of fees. Now, of course, index fees are much lower than than uh, active fees, and that adds to the advantage that index funds have. A second advantage that index funds have is that in most markets, and certainly over long periods of time, returns are very heavily skewed, which means that the average return in the stock is far above the median. The reason for that is that it, typically in a market, you have some really outstanding performers that pull the average uh, pull the average performance up. What that means is that over long periods of time, only a minority of stocks in an index actually outperform the index. Uh, and in the S&P 500, for example, over the last 20 years, I, the, the number is something on the order of 20 to 25 percent of all S&P 500 members have outperformed the S&P 500 simply because the index is being uh, supported by some really outstanding performers uh, uh, that, that do very, very well indeed. Again, when, the, when only a minority of stocks from which you might choose as an active manager outperform, that means active management is very difficult. And it, it's no less difficult if you're an institutional manager than if you're a mutual fund manager. Sure. Okay. Well, um, I really appreciate your time again, Craig. Thank you very much. Thank you, Murray. Happy to be here.